Good morning, everyone, on this Palm Sunday. Um, we will be starting from the, in the Prater Room with the blessing of the palm, and then we will proceed into the church right after the blessing. So thank you for coming this morning. If you could just uh, gather here, if you would like to, in, in the Prater Room, then we will proceed into the church. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Prince of Peace on this Palm Sunday. As we begin Holy Week today, we follow in our program. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in our hearts. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation that we may enter it with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. After telling a parable to the crowd at Jericho, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all of the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. Jesus answered them, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth now in peace. In the name of Christ, amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah described the suffering of God's servant in words that Christians will apply to the suffering of Jesus during his passion. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me a tongue of the teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens to my ear to hear those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helped me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. <coughs> who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who will be my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helped me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read portions of Psalm 31 responsively as found in your bulletin. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. As useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me to take my life. But for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. You are my God. My times are in your hand. From the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. And your loving kindness save me. Glory to the, to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is, is now, now, will be forever. Amen. Jesus expresses ultimate humility by declining to exploit his role as God incarnate. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2. Let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born of human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come, in, come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the, to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, 
and the elders who had come for him. Have you come out with swords and clubs if, if I was a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also is with him. But he denied it, saying, A little later, someone else on seeing him said, Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting. Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Man, do not know what you were talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, They kept heaping many other insults <coughs> on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are tell us. If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. You say that I am. What further testimony do we need? We have heard ourselves from his illness. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to take the house of the Lord, and saying that he himself is the Messiah. You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He serves out the people by teaching the crowd all of Judea. From Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length. But Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. 
Then they all shouted out together. Away with this fellow. Release for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do, not do, for if they do this when, when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, and the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the King of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. For this man has done nothing. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Truly I tell you, today you'll be, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon. And darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts, but all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things.
Let us be one now in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, everyone, to Prince of Peace Church. All of us gathered here together on this Palm Sunday. And welcome to Holy Week as we begin Holy Week today. Try to visualize the scene of the life and the culture of Jesus. The small towns, the dusty roads, the heat of the Middle East, the time, the place where Jesus was. Today, we set our feet in the dust of the streets of Jerusalem. People wave branches of palm and they spread their cloaks along the road. They give Jesus at first a royal welcome as king and they chant Hosanna. They shout, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But soon their shouts turn to crucify him, crucify him. My friends, today we begin Holy Week. Today we set our feet on the road to the Last Supper, to the garden, to the cross, and then to the tomb. This Holy Week story is our story, the story of our own lives, of joy, love, fear, grief, betrayal, and pain. Our ordinary lives are echoed today in the life and the love of Jesus. And so today we retell the story of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And every year, the Jewish people at this time, they gather in their homes to celebrate the Passover. It's the story of God's people journeying from slavery to freedom. Because the God of Israel saves. The biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann writes about the Passover that every Israelite, every Jew must sing this song again, not only to remember what is remembered, but also for what is experienced in the present. Today, we too are invited to sing this song together. Today, we gather with the church all around the world today in this special week of Holy Week to sing this song, not only about what is remembered, but also for what is experienced. The story of Holy Week is our story. It is the story of how God is a God of love and hope and victory. It is a story of every time we ourselves have experienced or felt betrayed or have felt defeated, or have felt even despairing at times in our life. This story is our story. So, it is the story of how we are loved. We are truly loved by God until the end. May God bless you. Amen.
prayers of the people. As we journey this week with Christ and celebrate the Paschal mystery of his death and resurrection, let us pray to God in the name of Jesus that every name above every name, saying, Hear our prayer, O God. For the church, remembering especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, Joseph, our priest, and for Chris and Barb, your deacons, that we may be strengthened to take up our cross, follow in his way, and share in his redeeming work. Hear our prayer, O God. For this parish family, that we who are called to be the community of the crucified one may empty ourselves as Christ did, serving in unselfish love. Hear our prayer, O God. For world leaders, that in all things they may act with compassion, strength, and wisdom as they seek to come to the aid of the people of Ukraine. Hear our prayer, O God. And we pray for the cities and people of Ukraine, that they may be delivered from the destruction and death of war and remain strong in their hope for their fight for freedom. Hear Hear our prayer, O God. For all who must bear the cross each day, for those who are far from home, for those who endure shame or threat or injustice, and for the weary and all who suffer, remembering especially... Jane, Mark, Judy, Terry, Frank, Charlene, Tom, Nick, John, Barbara, Joanne, Tracy, Nathan, Stephen, Jen, Jim, Donna, Carol, Helen, Mary Lee, Don, Rick, Lisa, and for those whom you would like to name at this time. they may find strength and hope in the God of life. We pray for those who have died. We pray for the innocence of Ukraine, children, women, and the troops. That they may rest in Christ and be raised into his glory. Lifting our voice with all creation, with Mary the God-bearer, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who sent your Son among us to bear the pain and grief of humankind. Hear the prayers we offer this day, for those in need in every place, and give us courage and to walk in the way of the cross and to share in his glorious resurrection, that they may live in the power of his spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name and enter his courts with thanksgiving.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Him, Son of the The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and, and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Jesus, Lamb of God, mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, our Redeemer, Redeemer. The gifts of God for the people of God. Christ, the body of Christ, bread of heaven. Amen. Our body of Christ, bread of heaven. Amen. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, bread of heaven, Jeremy. All are welcome at the table of the Lord. Spread of heaven, George. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Carl. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Woody. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, wood of heaven, man. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, 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 bread of heaven. 
body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Jennifer. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Lisa. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Andrew. God bless you. God bless you. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Spread of heaven, Julie. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Andrew. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Juliet. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Andrew. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Amen. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Julie. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Debbie. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Pam. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Ed. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. God bless you, dear. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Brian. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Annette. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. <coughs> Body of Christ, spread of heaven. 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 Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Don.
is in pardoning that we are pardoned in giving of ourselves that we receive in dying that we're born to eternal life let us pray our post-communion prayer together eternal God Heavenly Father, us as living members, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood, send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, a lot of things I must tell you this, on this Sunday. Um, there will be a special blessing right after this service. I'd like all of you to be part of it, of the medical sp supplies being sent to, the U to, to Poland and the Ukraine right after this service. Um, and um, I especially like to thank Bill for packing all the boxes yesterday. So uh, Bill Kingsbury, a tremendous help. And, uh, and I'd like to thank all of you, all of you, so for your generosity, you know, and for, it means a lot. I don't know how, it just, it just, uh, I just felt we had to do more for them. So I spoke to Father Myron last night, he's very grateful, and uh, we have at least two or three trucks now, uh, you know, and... Uh, and uh, I don't know if we need any more, but especially I'll need people to load and unload them, okay? So we'll begin loading at 4 o'clock on Monday, and then we have to go up to, to West Pittston at Corpus Christi Church. They are willing to, uh, they have offered to help with this too. Trinity Church, I'll be going there later after this service. And then uh, I'm grateful for Misericordia, the campus ministry there. Walgreens uh, for contribute uh, Pam uh, Pakalevich, uh, her nephew made, uh, you know, and so I'm so grateful to so many people, Jennifer Martin and the campus ministry, Chris Som uh, Somers, Somers at Misericordia. So, but I'll need mostly people who will, could come with us up to Scranton. It won't, it won't be that long. Uh, and... Um, just to unload and unload, load. So, but I'm gra very grateful, so grateful, the outreach committee, and uh, so there'll be a special prayer right after this. Also, there will be a, um, an Easter egg hunt next Sunday with the children. It's good to hear the children even this morning, um, and there'll be a blessing of Easter baskets at noon uh, on Holy Saturday, and please come out for our Holy Week services during the week. Holy Thursday, Good Fridays at, at 7 p.m., Good Fridays at noon. Holy Saturday, the Great Vigils at 8 p.m. Uh, so uh, I think that's all I was, that was on my mind this morning, okay? If anybody else wants to join us with an extra truck, uh, you're most grateful just in, in case we need. I don't know yet, so uh, all of you and your generosity. Just want to make it known to you. Yes, Chris. Um, I would like to add that um, also I will be offering healing after the service this morning. And as our tritium begins on Thursday evening, we'll start with an agape soup and bread supper together for all of you who are inviting all of you. And then the service will immediately follow. Okay. Anybody else? Any other announcements? Uh, Fred? Yes? property. Thank you for your hearty contribution as congregation. And will you please leave your drug tours on the table in the documents as you leave this over set for next year. Thank you, Marianne, for arranging all the lectors this morning. As Fred. you may know, we had to cancel our cleanup day yesterday. We're postponing it to next week. Now, there's good news and bad news. The good news is it's going to be warmer next Saturday than it was Bad news is our Marty's scene and it says chance of showers. So we'll, we'll have to be praying for good weather and lots of uh, Saturday at 9 30. Okay. 
Thank you, Frank. Okay. All right. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go forth into this Holy Week in the name of Christ to love and to serve and to sing. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
Thank you to our guest organist, Bernie. Yes. Okay. Guest organist.